um, at Becky Hilburn here. I'm uh, today. I'm doing a Copic and other marker test on the Strathmore um, Visual Journal, the Bristol style. If I'm a little bit out of it, I apologize. I was really, really sick yesterday, <laughs> like really sick yesterday, and um, I haven't fully recovered. But I get depressed. If I don't work so it's kind of like well I can push it and possibly get sicker or I can hold back and maybe not be as sick so um let's see what color is yeah all right no don't fall over so like I said if I'm a little bit out of it today I apologize it's because I was sick yesterday and I'm not all the way better um I will try to talk as much as possible, but I might be, I might get pretty quiet. Just like I said, uh, still not a f all the way up to snuff. So the first thing I'm going to do, even though this is a, a test, when I can, when I'm familiar with the materials, I try to treat my tests like they're a, um, like a tutorial as much as possible. No, I don't want that. I want this. So, um, right now I'm swatching the colors I want to use. I was thinking about using a pink and gray color palette. That's, those are some of my favorite colors together. Um, I also have some blues in case the gray gets too drab. And right now I'm swatching my wides because I'm going to want to apply a, um, a Copic wide wash. Ooh, our twenty, might, our twenty-two might be too much. And um, all of these are actually custom wides. So what you can do is you can buy empty Copic wide markers and fill them with the various ink of your choice. Um, and I like doing it. I mostly stick with lighter colors like this R01 here, but um, sometimes I'll do darker colors too, and it kind of influences your whole drawing. Something else I've talked about on this channel before doing is putting your your various ink in like a mini mister, and this is a Ranger mini mister, and it's not necess It's not I'm not because I'm using it. It doesn't mean I'm endorsing it. It means it was very cheap on Amazon when I bought it. So um, these do have a tendency to clog up. I would actually recommend going to like Dollar Tree or buying your misters in super bulk because you don't need a name brand mister. If, if a name brand mister is gonna lock up on me, then I might as well get the cheap kind, right? And um, I've also been making it a point to mix my marker brands together, partially because Copic, I don't have a perfect Copic family. There were colors I wanted that I couldn't find in Copic um, the colors I was missing and had difficulty getting at my local art supply store so I've been mixing with um, Prismacolors and Shinhan Twin Touches and, and Blick markers all of which are cheaper but not necessarily refillable and I have an upcoming tutorial about um, expanding your marker collection beyond a single brand because I think um, I think a lot of beginning artists they think it has to be all one thing and if you buy like a pre assembled um, marker display it really will seem like it should be all one thing but really I think you you get the best um, the best collection if you're willing to mix brands. Of course that means you have to swatch more. Which isn't really that big of a deal to me. I have a cute little notebook that I got when I backed the love. I want to say it's from the Lovely Anthology, but what is it? It might be from the Lovely Anthology when I... And um, I didn't want to sketch in it because I don't like having other people's art on my sketchbooks. I mean, stickers are one thing, but I don't want... I feel like that's deceptive. Um, it's beautiful, but it's not mine. But it's fine for a color swatching book for me. 
and the paper is nice so and that way if there are palettes that I like I can revisit them and if you're looking for recommendations color recommendations So I'm going to go ahead and apply a wash of pink with this R20 over the whole image. And uh, sometimes I find it really hard to get an even application, especially um, if my hands are shaking. Something you can do to help uh, help with that is like spray it afterwards with um, like um, high proof rubbing alcohol like 75 on up or spray it with colorless blender whichever you prefer you can also go over it with a wide colorless blender or if there's areas you want to selectively lighten you can you can do that with your your regular size colorless blender and it's a pretty rough application um, it's hard at this size to get like, um, you know, a more nuanced sort of thing. I wish somebody would come up, come out with like um, a way to easily apply large areas of color that, you know, this is like a, an awkward shape in the hand to be honest. And I kind of like it when my Copic illustrations look like they're going to be like a hot mess when I start out. Because I, I don't know. There's something about pulling something out of chaos that's really satisfying to me. So here's a spritzer with colorless blender and here's a spritzer with um, R22 which is light prawn. I also have a spray bottle with rubbing alcohol in it. I think it's just not high grade enough. I think this was 70, 75. Um, so it's not gonna work as well. But you could even get like select applications by doing some areas with like the less effective and then going over it with the more effective. And basically this isn't going to like blend it out it's just gonna lighten it a little bit by pushing some of the ink towards the back of the paper which is really good with um, thicker uncoated stocks like Strathmore's Bristol the, the problem with that is it's going to push it onto the next page but this is a test I want to see how when that happens as part of the test if you want to prevent that from happening all you really need to do is put a sheet of scrap cardstock underneath it and since it's alcohol, it should dry, or alcohol-based, it should dry fairly quickly. Uh, this is my colorless blender in a spray bottle. As you can see, it's just not as effective. It jams sometimes. These are the Ranger spray bottles. Um, I don't necessarily recommend them. I, I think I'm just going to get my spray bottles from like Dollar Tree from now on. Because like I said in the beginning, if they're going to perform this poorly I might as well get the cheap ones and then another thing I like to do is I like to um, spray a little bit oh, see it doesn't really want to spray it wants to like oh shoot I'm gonna have to fix that it wants to like wimp out on me by like dripping sadly like blood or something so thanks Ranger I think I want to remove some of that from her hair even though her hair is dark and it might not be visible and part of it is also um, I don't have a whole lot of the various ink in these because I wasn't a hundred percent sure if I was gonna like this technique and then um, they also leaked a little bit And when you apply your color, it's actually going to, um, it's
it's going to kind of like blend out problem areas. So as you can see, it's already blending, bleeding through um, where I, I push the ink through with the colorless blender. So if that bothers you, you should put a piece of cardstock underneath it. I'm just trying to, just messing around with it. This is about as mixed media as I get sometimes. I also like to mix Copic and watercolor. Okay, so this probably looks like it's never going to get toned down and she's always going to be really pink. And she probably will, uh, it will probably still influence her skin tone, which I want. That's why you're putting down um, a wash of Copic Wide first. And as you can see, other than at the top, which I don't really care about because this is a small sketchbook and this is a field test, um, at the top, it doesn't, it di I didn't do a very good job of blending, but everywhere else it's way less noticeable. To the point of like maybe not even being noticeable. Um, and this is kind of cheating. I've used a Strathmore Visual journal in Bristol, vellum Bristol, for Copic markers before. Not this one. I can't find my other one. It was a big one. Um, but I never wrote about it. And I, I mean, I really liked it. Um, I like using Bristol for my marker illustrations. I'm one of those people who wants like very subtle blends and stuff. You know, that's why I spray the whole paper. No, I'm kidding. That's because otherwise I would be a very... I would fall into very boring ruts. Um, okay, so I'm using E00, um, quote unquote skin white, to apply a base color. And I've talked about doing this in prior videos. I like, um, I work from light to dark for the most part, and um, I blend my darker colors out with the shade before it. Unless I really, really want to lighten it up, and then I might do two shades. So that's part of why I like select all of my colors ahead of time. And I want to do a tutorial soon about rendering darker skin tones. I find that Copic doesn't necessarily have a great selection for darker skin tones, so I'm kind of exploring with other brands to see what I can get. And I'd like to have um, a recommendation list for you guys at some point next year. Um, like, over the past few years, I've talked a lot about wanting to do, like, a recommended 20, 20, basic 25. And the more I spend time doing this, the more I'm like, I can't, because everybody, everybody has different needs, everybody colors differently. So this is E51. And if you want a smooth blend, you'll go over it, you'll go over your color, um, while it's still kind of wet. And on heavy papers like this, your colors can stay wet for a long time. And if you want a sharp delineation, you need to let it dry. So again, on papers like this, you might need to step away for a while. Right now, I'm fine with smooth blends. Anyway, um, like I was saying, I don't think I can, I can narrow it down. I mean, like, maybe, f like, 25 for fashion illustration or 25 for portraits but I can't do 25 for everything because that doesn't actually make any sense at all to me I mean even if you're just rendering people I can knock it down to 3 for Caucasian skin and 3 for African skin tones but I you know like you're still going to end up with like 12 at minimum 12 colors for skin tones which I think is great but that defeats the purpose of the essential 25 so I don't know I might make that a series for next year depending on whether or not people are interested in it
might let that dry a minute while I select um, the color I want for the shadow on her skin. I know for some people... So I was just applying um, blush with Blix 095, which, which is Shell, and Copic's E93, which is T-Rose. Those are kind of the pinks I go to for the most part. I'm getting a little bit lost in this, which is kind of okay. And I'll say this now because sometimes I forget. If there's um, content you enjoy, if there's content you find helpful on here, please let me know. And please share it with your friends. So now I'm just kind of following the contours of her face with E21. And this marker needs refilling because it's kind of pulling on the paper. Not enough that it's smearing. Copic will do that um, if it's running dry. It'll start smearing your ink. I'm not really sure what about the markers causes that to happen. Other than they're done being dry. Um, or if the nib is wrecked. And you can kind of see, maybe, maybe not. If I can get it to focus. You can kind of see where the nib is just looking really beaten up. Uh, that's because it's, like I said, kind of running dry. So I need to refill this before I do too many more tutorials with you guys. So I keep going back with E93 to just kind of like push the blush a little bit more. I've already selected the colors I want to use as um, shadow, but I think I kind of want to wait. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put them in the eyes. I have so much pink going on, I kind of want to make her whole outfit gray. Maybe I will do that. Gray's also my favorite color, so. <laughs> I think the, so since this is a field test, I should talk to you guys what I think about this. The size is a little bit small for me, um, but I also like drawing a little bit bigger than this. So that's not really, um, not really, and it comes in other sizes. I bought this size because I don't, I, I don't want to own a bunch of sketchbooks that are all the same size that I bought for review purposes that don't, some of them don't get used. So I try to buy a variety of sizes or like pocket sketchbooks or purse size sketchbooks so there's a chance I'll take them with me when I go places. So that explains the size. Um, it has two really thick chipboard covers which I'll show you in a minute and I really like them because it provides a lot of stability. And this is, this is true for all of their visual journals from the tiny ones to the the large ones um and with the large ones that's where you're really going to notice how nice it is to have that extra that extra sturdiness
Um, it's also really useful for watercolors just because like the format is really good. Um, when I do travel watercolors, which I actually don't, I don't, I do a lot of them and I just don't share them anywhere because I want to do travel books, but, um, I just, you know, like get busy. I do so many other things. I get too busy. Anyway, I'm going to show you the chipboard covers. So, um, they are, this is the front cover and this is really substantial chipboard for a, let me pull out a little bit, I'm sorry, wrong way. Um, really substantial chipboard for a front cover. It's got a smooth coating to it, um, which repels water. And it's also got a chipboard back cover. And the inside is almost like that dry erase stuff that you get with some planner journals. And I left the, you can remove the, the cover information, but I'm leaving it on because I'm doing this for review. Or I'm, reviewing these so I need to have the information handy but I also wrote the paper type on the inside of the the cover so that I'll know even after I'm done reviewing the spirals are wire and they're covered with a plastic coating so that's kind of nice um, cheaper sketchbooks don't have the, the covered wires um, this one is the Bristol. Um, my problem is that Strathmore does different series, and I can only assume that the color this is written on, written in, indicates the, the series. So this would be like series 3, which is good, but it's not professional, or I'm sorry, series 300, which is good, but it's not professional grade. That would be um, series 400 and 500. But I'm not really sure because this is blue and the blue, I can't remember the blue having any kind of a correlation, but this is yellow um, and I have another Strathmore mixed media pad and that I actually use for my marker tests. Um, it is not the visual journal though and the paper is much thicker than this. This is really thin for mixed media paper, um, but I'm not even talking about this journal today. This different review and this is a different review. I'm just bringing it up because I bought several to test and the Bristol's the only one I've ever um, used before but it takes ink and it takes marker just fine The techniques I would normally do on cardstock or Bristol can be done on this paper. So really, if you're looking for a sketchbook that you can marker in or ink in, this is a good choice. I mean, I marker in like my crummy Blick sketchbooks, which I love. When I say crummy, I really just mean they're cheap and they're like generic. They're not any special paper. Um, but... I mean, if you want to be able to like tear it out and pay, trim off the perforations and have like a nice paper, nice little illustration that you can sell or put up or whatever, scan without the, the spiral getting in the way, this is a good option for that. So basically, if you do conventions, this is probably a good pick. Let's check and see if it's bled through. Again, if you want to prevent bleed through, you put a sheet of cardstock underneath. But, um, wow, it hasn't yet. It probably will, but it hasn't yet. And if I actually allow the inks to dry, it's less likely to. But if you're just working kind of quickly, you know, I mean, it doesn't have time to, try, time to dry between layers. There's a good chance that it'll, you'll get some bleed through. I'm going to go over this with um, a skin 
a skin to kind of skin tone to kind of blend it out. I just wanted to knock in those shadows so I could start blending them out if that makes sense. And usually I use um, blue violets to do skin tone, but because this is so pink, I wanted to go with a color that would look like she was influenced by her environment. So I'm doing a red violet, a kind of a gray red violet. And Copics do dry a little bit lighter than they go on, but it still looks pretty dark to me. So I'm gonna go over it with, did I already do E21? I think I did E51, and then I was like, I'm going to wait. So I'm going to go over it again with E51 to kind of blend it out. That's another nice thing about working on really uh, thirsty papers like this, is that you can blend things a lot until the colors work for you. Whereas, um with like coated papers you can't do as much blending and uh, it's gonna look a lot streakier because the color is just sitting on top of the paper instead of soaking in so some of the techniques I talked to you guys about aren't gonna work on other types of marker paper they only really work on um, like card stocks or express it blended blending paper blending card which I still need to review at some point I need to order it and review it because that's one that everybody uses and I've never used it so I need to get on that and see what the fuss is about it's funny I review markers so so much in fact like this week there's a review for the artist law of alcohol based markers and for hobby lobby's art markers um oh you guys can't see it art markers <laughs> and um like i don't i very rarely talk about papers anymore or um i'm trying to talk about them on here on the youtube channel because it's a little bit easier for me to show you guys what I'm talking about. I used to have to like, the way I do reviews in general up until like a couple months ago is I would basically sit there with a camera and take, well my phone, and take photos of every single step and then upload them all to Google Drive. And sometimes Google Drive would like upload them in the wrong order. So I'd have to reorganize them and I'd have to crop everything. And um, it just really didn't feel like it was worth the effort to me. It was a lot of effort for what I was getting. I wasn't really getting much out of it. And there was a lot of effort, and this is a lot easier for me. Although, the person who so kindly edits my videos is like, Quit making so many videos. Slow down. No. It's, no. Because it takes a lot for them to come up. And I want to have them ready when I'm doing the post about the product. Because otherwise, I'm really just doing the same thing twice. I'm creating redundancies. So you guys can see with her skin and her dress that at this point, the pink isn't even really an op isn't really even a factor. I like guess no longer greatly affecting. her or her skin. Sorry, I'm just thinking about colors right now. This one, I think I classified it with the violets, but I think I'm going to reclassify it maybe with the blue violets, because it doesn't, my swatch looks a lot more 
sorry. My swatch looks a lot more blue violet than violet or red violet. So I'm going to let the skin rest for a while because it's starting to get a little bit muddy because um, I've like worked certain areas a lot and I knew that was going to happen so I now I'm intentionally letting it rest. And by letting it rest I'm really just letting it dry a little bit so that when I put on another layer it's a little more distinct. You can see the delineations a little bit better. And this is a sweater, so I'm doing a scribbly pattern on it now that I have a base coat of color, just to kind of um, imply like a knit. It is mostly going to blend together, um, so you aren't going to see it the first go around, but. I think after I let it dry and I apply other layers, <clears throat> it'll be a little bit more noticeable. It's amazing how quick this can go on such a small illustration. Her skin still feels kind of, kind of damp. I don't want to do the hair right now because it's going to, up here, it's going to, Sorry, that's my cat downstairs who thinks he's been abandoned. <laughs> no, he's just downstairs because he chose to be downstairs. So I guess I'll do her bag in pink. And I might gonna have to really put some shadow on it because it matches with the background so much that it's kind of pointless. Maybe I should have done green. I guess now would be a good time to check and see how we're doing. We still haven't bled through, so that's pretty good. This is a pretty thick paper. Does it give a weight? I'm sure it does. It's a hundred pound, and this the watercolor paper is a hundred forty pound, and this mixed media paper is ninety pound. That's why it feels so so light. It's also only thirty four sheet. Nope. Well, hmm, sixty eight sheet. So that's back in front. Right? Yeah, I guess so. Hmm. That's not such a good deal. For somebody like me, I'm gonna like tear through that. Alright, so I'm going back over E21. So you can kind of see it's much less when I go over it again after allowing the skin areas to dry out. It's much less muddy because it's um, it's not blending in as much, so it's creating like a line, which kind of indicates uh, like um, a stronger shadow, and that can help decrease when things look muddy is having a stronger cast shadow. Oh, hello! You found out how to get upstairs. Yeah, that works a lot better, I think. And now to fix the neck with this poor going dry color. Actually up here too.
kind of want to let it dry before I add another to that. So another thing with these heavier papers is if you're working with colors that kind of go together but they don't really go together, maybe the red you want, the darker red you want to use is a little too blue, um, these kind of papers will help you blend without having to do hardly any work at all. Like this red I'm using from Prismacolor is really too blue to go on top of um, the Blick 019 this red here, poppy red, but um, the paper absorbs it and it kind of helps with the blending so it doesn't look so stark. And you can also go back over the color and kind of blend it out a little bit to help with the transition, especially if you want to do multiple layers of a color. So we're kind of rounding the bin on this, almost, almost kind of almost done. C8. And you can see um, the scribbles, which I'm using as kind of like a knitwear pattern. You can see them a little more distinctly with this darker color. And um, something else you can do that I'll probably show you in this video is use a color pencil to kind of um, help some things pop a little bit more rather than using um, like Copic Opaque White, which you can use also. I mean, if you have the inclination and the patience, you can get some really rich effects by mixing marker alcohol based markers with color pencils on top of them I'm gonna zoom in since I'm doing the hair right now well doing the eyes and probably the face and maybe freckles How we do with that leg, we're gonna find out. I can always push it back a little bit with a lighter color, but you don't want to do that too, too much because it can get really muddy. Sometimes it's just best to like let it go and move on.
can't even see the leg. I may or may not have allegedly messed up, so it doesn't matter, right? I'm actually trying to push it so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Sometimes when I'm pulled in for details, I forget. And uh, I try not to let that go on too long. I try to fix it. Still learning. Freckles are getting kind of lost on this one. Hopefully hazelnut will. You know what? I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit and then do it. That's what I'm gonna do. I've gone a really long time without using um, markers because I was doing so much watercolor stuff. I just didn't really have the time to do both. And I mean, watercolor stuff and reviews, you know. But I really missed working with markers. feel like the time I spent away, I kind of cheated myself out of opportunities for improvement. But the nice thing about alcohol markers, water-based markers, watercolors, is that um, while you're learning the color theory of getting the colors you want and layering them and, you know, color interactions and stuff, that applies... Oh, no. I want a darker color than hazelnut. That applies across... I think walnut might be the color I want. Yeah, I think so. Um, that applies across all three. Like the way they interact with the paper light-wise is very similar. So once you learn how to do stuff with one, you can you can use that on the other ones. sort of like nothing, nothing is lost, nothing is wasted. The time spent learning any skill will often help you with all of the other skills you want to learn. So go ahead and like spend that time learning or improving other things you love too. Don't, don't worry about completely losing it. The only thing I would suggest that you have to keep up with every day is like drawing. Just do some like warm-up exercises. 
stretch your hand, keep your hand in practice. I do every day. Um, I recently started drawing, I got really tired <laughs> of um, drawing senshi stock poses and uh, kids models and plus size models. That's like what I was doing for a while and dancers. So now I'm doing people in yoga, like very simplified people in yoga poses to try and improve my ability to draw a gesture. I mean, it's good to mix it up. I'll go through phases where uh, I just want to practice a lot of faces because that's like the thing I think I'm weak at. Um, or I'll just draw a lot of backgrounds in ink. You know, like I try to pick things that I know I'm really weak at and, and do them. So I should probably draw more cars and like glass buildings. I don't like either of them. So you can see I like went out of the lines and I goofed up there. And I think we've talked about this before where you use your colorless blender to get rid of that and really all you're doing is you're pushing your you're not picking up the ink you're pushing the ink to the back of I like lightened up a lot didn't it you're pushing your ink to the back oh you can't see to the back of your card let me actually zoom out so it's still there, but it's like way less noticeable. And um, if you're not like actively looking for it, you're just gonna think it's like one of the pink areas kind of faded out, which is good. It's what I want people to think. turned out pretty well. I say as I add more strokes. <laughs> So there's a couple more things I want to do. One, I want to add at least a shadow underneath her. And two, I'm going to pull out my opaque white kit uh, so you guys can see some tricks. Hopefully. Hopefully some tricks. Some good tricks. Hopefully it'll turn out well. And you guys will be like, oh yeah, I'm going to make an opaque white kit. I also kind of want to like pinken up the blush on her knees and the blush on her elbow and the blush on her cheeks because they got kind of lost on this one. Right there. Okay, so I'm going to go look for my opaque white kit and I'll be right back. 
So I actually grabbed a couple things. I grabbed my opaque white kit and I grabbed my Derwent Color Soft color pencils, which are currently my favorite color pencils to use. And inside my opaque white kit are a bunch of opaque white uh, markers and pencils and tools. And I also use this in my Strathmore toned tan sketchbook. I have a Distress Marker White which is pick and Picket Fence, which is an opaque white. I have a Recollections um, Opaque White Marker, which I like a lot. I have a Winsor Newton White Blender. I have a white chalk pencil. I have a white Derwent Ink Tense. I have a white Derwent Color Soft. I have a white Signo. I have a white Pit Pen. And I have a white Unipasca, which hasn't been activated yet, a uh, white Unipasca brush pen. And I've used those, the, I've used all of them in the past, but I used this in the past. Um, I just haven't gotten around to using it again. So I'm going to do a little bit of shading with the, with the color soft. And then I'm going to add some highlights when I'm done with the white, I think. And um, I like to have, it might seem redundant, it probably is redundant, but I like to have separate kits. Um, because when one, when my white pencil from one runs out, um, I can always go get the other one. It doesn't affect, and I tend to go through white pencils really quickly, as you can see. Um, so having two is good. It doesn't. It doesn't, it is, it doesn't negatively affect me, I guess. And um, you can also blend out some of your your uh, pencil color with um, they make like pencil color blenders and I want to do a review of that soon I'm kind of tempted to go get the one I have but I'm also afraid it's going to um, like because like um, I know a lot of them are made with a product called Gamsol which has the tendency to, um, it's made with like mineral oil or baby oil, so it can, um, it can like leave a grease stain potentially, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm actually going to use another technique I've been told about, and I've never done it. Oh, always learning new things here. Oh, shoot. How frustrating. My, um, camera rig came undone for a second time in two days and I'm holding my camera in my hands so I guess I gotta fix that and then get back to you guys all right I've got it fixed for now I tend to adjust my um, camera often by pulling the, the thing which is probably what it's designed to do but you know hmm so it's blending it a little bit. This is a colorless blender from Blick. <laughs> I'm kind of being a jerk. I didn't want to ruin my Copic colorless blender. But you can scrub. It looks like you can scrub the color out. And um, I'm also going to break my own rules and go over it with my Prismacolor because I'm afraid the Blick colorless blender might um, push the underlying color backwards. So it might blend it, but it might also uh, push the color out. Okay, so that's what that looks like, and I'm not super excited about it, but that's okay. You know, we did an experiment, and we learned something together. So that's always exciting, and I'm going to adjust my camera and be more careful with it this time. Most of the time I try to grab my, my gooseneck in such a way that it won't, um, you can't necessarily see my arms reaching all over the place. But I think those days are over until I can find a better solution. It was a cheap, it is a cheap gooseneck anyway. Um, I got it off of Amazon. So if you guys have a gooseneck you clamp you like and you use, I would love to hear your recommendations because this one isn't necessarily doing the right job for me. And I really need to get on that testing 
the um, color pencil blenders because um, I love these color pencils. They're very creamy and soft. If you find Prismacolors to be frustrating to use, you you might really like these because they're very different. I find Prismacolors that, uh, annoying to use. They take too long for me. I like sketching with them, but I don't like coloring with them because it takes a while to build up color. Um, but I like the Derwent Color Soft, and I need to do a review on them, which means doing a bunch of tests which um, is more likely to happen if you guys say you want to see them. Now I'm going over the color pencil with a little bit of Shenhan Twin Touch alcohol marker. just trying to, to kind of meld the three into a coherent whole. Really not digging that part. <laughs> I tried to fix it. I will continue to try to fix it. Alright, so now we're on to final details. Um, so I'm pulling out, oh yeah, so I wanted to show you guys something. I'm not sure if I've ever done it on the channel before, but something I like, okay, first of all, I'm doing many reviews on these markers. You can't cap the chisel nib onto the bullet cap. Secondly, you can see my nib is coming out, so I have to push it back in. But it's got this opaque white amazingness in it. It is alcohol based. Um, so with this, be a little careful. And you can use it to knock in areas of highlight. Like I'm doing here. And I wish they had a brush because I could do it a lot more cleanly. I'm just kind of like gesturally doing it. And you can build up your layers of highlight and it also kind of blended the um and I'm sorry it's it's a really subtle effect and it's not even it's not super noticeable here either but it's enough to help knock and summon over there too you can build it up into a more opaque white by letting it dry and then reapplying. I think this stuff is awesome. You can subtly build up details of white on top of clothing. So if you went a little too dark, you can kind of fix that up. And this is an alcohol based marker so it will also be pushing your pigment to the back of the page kind of but um if you're using this to lighten this up i'm sure you don't that's not an issue for you i like using the chisel in because it puts out a lot more pigment And you do have to be kind of kind of wary because um, the pigment will build up on your page and make it kind of chunky and you don't want to go 
over this with your Copics because it'll pick it up. And you want to clean it off afterwards. And I keep this one separate because, like I said, I, I end up using it a lot. Now, if you want more opaque, I really like the Recollections um, opaque white marker. It is more opaque. It doesn't have the, you can build up the color. It doesn't have, it's not shiny the way um, the Distress white picket fence is. And I actually don't like the fact that picket fence is shiny. So mine is starting to get a little beaten up. So I'm kind of hesitant to do the highlights in her eyes with it. I think I won't. But as you can see, you can start ow, you can start building up your white. Oh, I'm running out of time always, huh? So fortunately, I always I'm always clearing a card as I'm filling a card, so um, it's not actually that big a deal when I run out of space. But it does tell me I should be wrapping up this video, so I'm gonna work on doing that. So I'm adding even more white highlights. Uh, kind of more selectively with the white color, Derwent Color Saw. Um, and mine's kind of dull, so I need to sharpen it. So what really is bugging me is this area right here on her purse, and I think I might go, let's see, seven and try and darken that up if I can't. And this is perfect for, um, well, if the tip doesn't break, adding highlights to the eyes. You can also use a Signo if your Signo works. I've been having a lot of bad luck with Signo lately. Let's see if mine is working today. Nope. This is like the fourth I've had to throw away because it just doesn't want to work in a month. Do I have another? Yeah, maybe. Oh, this one doesn't work either. Seriously, Signal? And this one's a full one. It's so frustrating. I think I might have gotten it going. Nope. Love that. I used to really love the Signo gel pins for like minor comic corrections and now I can't recommend them because I've gotten so many bad ones. And this is um, a white Derwent Intense. It can be blended out with water for a smoother transition. If you do that, um, you're gonna lose some of the opacity. But I don't know how much that, how, if you're trying to blend something out, I don't know how much you care about losing the opacity. Anyway, I, that's the point of blending something out. Let's do one more layer on the inside of the purse and maybe one more layer underneath. And you can also um, go in with watercolors if you want and add some shadow. I really recommend um, an affordable watercolor set as a way to extend a marker collection that you're just starting to build up. I think that's probably it. So, um, for this test, what do I think of the Strathmore Visual Journal Bristol paper? Well, it didn't actually bleed through, and we did a lot of different kind of things on it um, with Copics. We did spray. Actually, I could do another layer of spray. Always more spray, right? 
There it is, I picked it up. There we go. And I could even um, get rid of that spray by covering it again or trying to blend it out, but I'm okay with it. So this, so far the sketchbook has uh, taken what I've thrown at it pretty well. I did actually do a Posca test that I never showed you guys. Um, and it handles Posca pretty well, but Posca will start to tear up this paper if you do too much on it. So I need to do a real Posca test on it and then I can tell you guys for sure what I think. But just from that little bit, it was starting to be an issue. Um, but in general, I'm really happy with this paper. I think it's a great, if you like um, doing marker stuff on the go, like at cons or at a coffee shop, I think this is a great um, little sketchbook for that. They're affordable. Um, I got mine at Jerry's Artorama in Nashville. Um, but Strathmore is a pretty widely carried brand, so you should be able to find it elsewhere. I don't think I've seen them at My Michaels, but My Michaels has like a weird small selection. Um, so that's been the Strathmore Visual Journal with Copic Markers. I hope you guys have had a great day. If you found this video useful, I hope you share it with your friends. Um, please consider hitting like. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Um, and check out my blog, natosoup.blogspot.com, where I post reviews like this and more at pretty much every week. Have a good day, guys. This is Becca Hilburn. Bye.